Hello and welcome back to another video. You asked for it and I'm bringing it to you. Today we're comparing the 2020 Kia Telluride and the 2020 Toyota Highlander. Now I've already compared the 2019 Highlander to this, which at that time, the Highlander uh, 2020 wasn't available. Now we have it and finally has arrived. And today we're gonna compare it against the king of the three row seaters, which is the Kia Telluride. You probably watch thousands of videos about the Kia Telluride. I've done tons of comparison with the Kia Telluride and other vehicles to see how they compare against each other. And now we have this one. Has Toyota finally done it? Have they brought down the king of three row seaters, the Kia Telluride, which is one of the most famous three row seaters in so many uh, journalists and YouTubers like myself have done comparisons and reviewed this as being one of the best three-row seaters in the market right now for the money, of course. So our goal for today is to find out what these two offer in terms of packages, engines, and on top of that, we'll talk about in technology, which is very important for some people, find out what this offers and explore the 2020 Highlander. My favorite part about comparing vehicles is that you get to find out a lot more about the competition when you put them against each other like we are today. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe and like and check out my other comparisons where you can find the link in the description box. The 2020 Highlander is provided to us thanks to our good friends at Toyota Georgetown, at Georgetown, Ontario, Canada. If you want to know more about their dealership, the link will be in the description box or in the Instagram if you want to reach out and take this beauty for a test drive. Meanwhile, the Kia Telluride on the side is provided to us by Kia Canada. As I said previously, I've done multiple reviews on this vehicle. I've actually done a snow test as well of the Telluride. If you want to watch that video, the link will be in the description box. Now, let us start in comparing this two. Let's talk about prices and packages. The Kia Telluride in Canada, the base package called the EX, starts at $45,000 Canadian. In the US, the base model called LX starts at $32,000 US dollars. The US market gets different names and packages compared to Canada. The top trim level in Canada is called SX Limited. In the United States, it's just called SX, which starts at $42,000. In Canada, the top trim SX Limited starts at $53,000. Or you can add the Napa leather option that gets you to about $54,000. The one that we have for today is the SX Limited, the top trim, which starts at $53,000. Now, how does the Telluride compare to the 2020 Highlander? Well, the Toyota Highlander in Canada, the base model, which it is a front wheel drive train called the Highlander L front wheel drive starts at $40,000. In the United States, the packages offered are very similar. The base model starts at 34,600, of course, US dollars. Meanwhile, the platinum package starts at $47,000. The Telluride doesn't offer any front wheel drive, but it does offer all wheel drive, which of course the Highlander offers as well. The models shown for this video are both the top trim you can purchase. The difference is in price. In Canada, it's about $1,000 more for the Telluride. In the United States, the difference is the other way. The Telluride is cheaper by $4,000 compared to the Highlander for the same trim. Let's move on to the front end, of course, the exterior side. First of all, as you can see, the Highlander from the 2019 model is completely redesigned. The 2019 uh, Telluride and 2020 remain kind of the same, not very different, but this one is fully redesigned on the outside and inside. I wasn't the biggest fan of the older model, of course, outdated interior, but this time I think Toyota has brought us something very special, which I'm excited 
to discover as we go along. Now, front end, first of all, what do we have in here? LED headlights, LED headlights, fog lights, fog lights. This does seem like it has some extra fog lights at the bottom. This has a single one onto this side. Now, both these two vehicles are equipped with parking sensors, um, front bumper, rear side as well. And of course you have the camera located onto the front, onto the grill, the same thing on the side because both are equipped with 360 cameras. We'll uh, discover that and move on once we get inside and talk about the technology side of this. Um, on top of that, they both have a massive grill in the front, as you can see, one side, this side over here. One thing to mention about the Kia Telluride that I found out recently is that apparently the designers of the Telluride were inspired by the Range Rover Sport, which why a lot of people actually get to confuse this vehicle and see some similarities between the Range Rover and, of course, the Telluride. Meanwhile, this one here, well, this thing has its own design, which it is quite unique to it. Uh, it's very different, very different style overall. What do they offer under the hood? Well, the Telluride only offers one engine and one drivetrain. A V6 3.8 liter naturally aspirated engine that makes 291 brake horsepower with self-leveling suspension system and multi-terrain select option. The Highlander offers a little bit more. As I mentioned previously, a front wheel drive system and an all wheel drive. It has a 3.5 liter six cylinder direct injection engine with an eight speed automatic transmission. And it makes about 295 horsepower, four brake horsepower more than the Telluride. The all wheel drive drivetrain offers the same engine with added features for the Platinum, which are the dynamic torque vectoring all wheel drive system with a rear driveline disconnect and a multi-terrain select option. Now let's move on to the side here and let's talk about some convenience features that both these two vehicles offers. Well, of course, it's a 2020 model, therefore you get keyless entry in here, keyless entry onto the side. Now, the similarity between the two of them is that this side over here, the door on the second row seat doesn't have any keyless entry option as it has onto the front. This has a button onto the door handle. This is actually a touch and of course slide your hand in to open it. In terms of the mirrors on the side, the Kia Telluride, if we lock it, it will actually fold the mirrors as you can see and of course it has the camera underneath the mirrors it's the same thing onto this side they both have that signal located across the mirror which it is an extensive feature and at the same time they both have blind spot assist as well now this if we lock it it's not going to fold the mirrors but what it does have though it's a heated mirror and of course you can adjust it on the rear side since they are powered. Um, in terms of the key fobs, well, both of them don't have a remote start on the key fob. Possibly the Toyota, because they're known to do this. They had the same thing with the uh, Toyota pickup truck that I reviewed recently, is that sometimes they have two buttons where you can start it up from there. I'm not 100% sure whether they have that feature in there, but I do know they both don't have it on the key fob. What you could probably do is download an app which both offer and start it out from there. If it's too cold outside and I want to get inside the car, well, you can do that probably through the app connectivity, which both again offer. Now let's move on to the rear side and let's talk about what they offer in terms of convenience, of course, and in terms of technology. Well, first of all, if you wanted to use either or for a towing, well, this offers up to 5,000 pounds of towing capacity. This equipped properly, the same thing for the Telluride, will offer the same, about 5,000. So they're exactly the same when it comes to the towing capacity. In terms of technology, well, they both have LED tail lights, LED tail lights. They both have the backup camera, which is used for the 360 as well. And you have the sensors across onto the bumper, the same on this side. In terms of design, boy, this is a very unique shape. This is pretty standard, similar to the RAV4, just larger. Um, but this one doesn't look at all like maybe one of the Kia uh, sub-models for uh, the compact crossovers. Now, in terms of convenience, uh, they both have power liftgate, of course. The difference is how they open uh, with the extra features that they both offer. So, for this side, in order for you to actually open the tailgate, you have to just slide your foot under, left and right. It takes a little bit of a 
try. So apparently it is on the left side of the vehicle and it opens up. With this, you just gotta stand behind it for a couple of seconds and it should pick up. Okay, so it's picking up, so here you go. So basically with this is that you just gotta stand behind it for like three seconds. It's the same thing on the Hyundai Palisade if you watch one of my reviews. So they're very similar. Now when it comes to the actual space in here, they're not too far from each other. Now let's talk about dimensions. Telluride has a longer wheelbase. It is wider and better length compared to the 2020 Highlander, but not a massive difference. When it comes to the cargo volume, well, the Telluride does offer more cubic feet compared to the Highlander, behind the first row seat, the second and the third row seat. The biggest difference is in the third row seat at 21 cubic feet for the Telluride and 16 cubic feet for the Highlander. Now let's move on to this side and let me show you what this offers. First of all, of course, you have a third row seat and of course you can fold them. You can pull this lever onto this side and then fold the seat down. That way you get more uh, storage compared. That way you get more storage, of course. And then the same thing onto this side. You can do the same that. And then in order to like lift it up, you can do that. And then it's not automatic, it's manual. And then you have for the Highlander, you have some extra space over here. You can basically pull that up and then you can basically use that. Now let me show you onto this side. First of all, it's similar in here too. Uh, what you can do, of course it is manual, you can pull this and then push the seat in order to of course fold the seat. And then you have some space underneath as well, similar to the Highlander. Um, this one though does offer you a second, um, this one does, the Kia Telluride does offer uh, two switches located onto that side where you can fold it automatically or you can do it manually as well through this uh, pull over here. You can see this rope. So they're not too far from each other with the exception to the um, Telluride that offers you the automatic option to fold the seat. Now that we have covered the rear side on both vehicles, let's move on to the second row seat and let me show you what they offer and we'll talk about the third row seat as well how easy it is to get in and out now i've already done testing on this one and it is okay so i will compare it to this um, how easy it is to get into the third row seat compared to the telluride and of course we're gonna try with a person my height let's get into the third row seat and of course you can close these things with a button located at the top That seems like it takes us a bit longer to close. Now, in order to move the seat forward, in order to get in, what you can do is basically push this part over here and then lift the seat. There you go. And then, there we go. And then just push it forward. That way you got some space to get in. Now, now let's find out how easy it is to get inside. Okay, well, it's not that hard. Um, in terms of space in here, well, this on the third row seat is very similar to the Telluride. It's not bigger, it's not smaller, it's almost exactly the same because I've tested the Telluride many, many times in different comparisons. So they're not too far from each other on the third row seats. Um, next on, we'll move into the interior and show you from the back and then we'll move on to the front. Going to the back side, as I mentioned, the seats, those are folded. Um, you can basically unfold them by pulling the, the actual, um, this part over here and then you can lift it up and then pull it up basically. Now for the seat over here, what you can do is that there is a button on this side that you press and then lift it up and you have the seat up again so that's pretty much to do the opposite you press the button over here and it will automatically move if you want some space if you want people to get in on this side very smart to have an actual button instead of you having it to move um, especially for senior people this is a great idea okay that wasn't that hard Again, very similar on both vehicles. Very 
very similar, very easy to get in and out. Now, let me get onto the second row seat and let me show you what it offers. Okay, so onto the second row seats. First of all, let me adjust this thing and I bet, okay, can you actually move? You can't slide the seat back and forth, can you? Oh, there we go. Okay, so another thing to ma another thing about the Kia Telluride is that it does offer power second row seats. So basically, you have a button onto the side to press, and it automatically folds for you to get in onto the third row seat. Or if you just want to move this, they both offer eight seats as an option. Same thing with the Highlander, the new model. Now onto the center console in here, let's talk about some techs that they offer. This offers heated seats on the rear side, climate control onto the center. Meanwhile, the Kia has it up here. Now the Highlander has taken the space here for the panoramic roof that goes across something that the Kia doesn't have fully. You still get a sunroof in here and the one in the front, but this is full panoramic view. Also, the Kia does offer you heated seats and ventilated on the rear side, something that I don't see on the Platinum package, which is the top trim for Canada. In terms of power, we have two USB ports at the bottom, very similar to the older Highlander. And then, of course, we have a sunshade onto here, very similar to the Kia Telluride. In terms of comfort level and room, well, they're both very similar. Not too far. I still have some headroom in here. And I do have two cup holders in here as well, similar to the Kia Telluride. The captain chairs in here are very nice and comfortable. The colors of this vehicle seem very similar to the one that I used into the Palisade. Palisade had similar interior style. This one has this beautiful wood trim around it to give you a very luxurious uh, feel, um, something that I very much enjoy. It's the same thing on the Telluride. So somehow the Toyota designers have been inspired by the Kia Telluride on the interior. I just, I would have wished a bit more uh, extra features to actually compete with the Telluride on the rear side, but you still get heated seats in here and you got your climate control down there. Now let's move on to um, the front and talk about the most important parts, the driver cockpit and what it offers in terms of technology. Okay, onto the inside here, and let me share some things that I've noticed right away. Well, first of all, it's freshly done. First of all, it's redesigned completely on the inside compared to the 2019 model. You can definitely see a lot of new features and new, uh, new shapes as well in terms of technology and in terms of the actual interior. Now, let me start it up. The button is right here. Um, this one does have a standard manual steering column that you can basically adjust. Um, let's start with this side over here. So what do we have? in comparison to the Kia Telluride, mostly in common. Well, first of all, they both have a heads-up display. Um, they both have, for the package that we have for the SX for Canada, they both have an analog and digital uh, tachometer, which is into the center. You can display um, basically into the center all the information. You have the tachometer on one side, the speedometer on the other side with temperature and oil, of course. And then you can change all the menus right in here. You can change all the settings into there and then change the modes okay and then into the center in here we have the steering wheel redesigned as well nice and grippy um, stitches around it similar to the Kia Telluride they offer similar features onto the steering wheel of course you have the adaptive cruise control onto this side and then you have of course the menu controls onto there onto the door panel we have memory seats similar to the Kia Telluride and we have the switches here for the windows and to um, basically lock the window onto the second row seat and then you have the control unit for the actual mirrors. Now onto this side here we have the heated steering wheel option. They both share the same thing. They both have the camera button where you can basically turn it on um, and at the same time you have the control unit for the headlights onto the side and fog lights and so on. Now Let's move on to the center. Well, let's mention some things that they share in common. Well, first of all, they both have, ha they both have a wireless charging port. This has it right in the center in here. So you can put your phone there and charge it. And it has a switch here where you can turn it off and turn it on. And of course, we have the armrest uh, box storage in here onto this inside. They both share 
some driving modes. They have eco, they have, um, of course, sport mode, you have normal, you have rock and dirt, you have mud and sand. So they're very similar when it comes to that specific um, driving experience, the driving modes, they both share similar. This one has uphill and downhill assist. And of course, this one has the power handbrakes and the auto hold, which they both share the same thing and the auto and start stop option both have similar things so they're very similar onto this side they both have a shift knob they use for the gear and of course you can use the manual option as well now this doesn't seem like it has any pedal shifters i know the kia the trim the limited does offer you the pedal shifters this on the other hand is just standard what you can do is if you're that big of a fan of the uh, manual transmission modes well you can switch into the left and use that uh, type of and of course use the manual option that way. Now, onto the center, here we have all the climate control um, into this side. One thing to mention is that they're very similar when it comes to the features onto this area. First, they offer onto the front, cooling and heated seats, passenger power seat, passenger power seat with the bolster adjustment as well on both vehicles, very similar. They both have two cup holders into this side. Now, the things, things where, where things change a little bit are onto the infotainment system. Now, the infotainment system on the new Toyota, it is absolutely sharp and clean compared to the 2019 Highlander. This is very similar um, design, but sharper, cleaner, and more features. The screen itself in here is actually massive. It's a 12.3 inch. Now the Kia doesn't offer the same size screen. You can, uh, it is touch screen. Of course, when you have the buttons in here, it has a built-in navigation system. It comes with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, all the extra features that you need. You can also control the actual um, unit. You can also control the climate unit from here for the seats specifically, and you can adjust um, the menu. So for example, you have all the apps onto the side. You can open one side. So it's basically like an iPad with two screens that you can separate. You have that option, and then you have your climate control, the climate unit as well for the seats, the music, and you have the trip information. Now the Kia does offer some extra features. So for example, it has a feature where you don't have to raise your voice to speak to someone in the rear on the third row seat specifically. Um, basically what you can do is um, shut down the music onto this, turn on the microphones into the front and have the voice uh, go through to the third row seat. A very good feature that I mentioned it um, a few times. It also, you can control the music basically for the Kia, you can turn off the music on the rear side, you just have it onto the front side. Another difference between the two of them is actually onto the cluster. Similar clusters, but with an extra feature on with an extra feature onto the Kia. So the Kia offers you this option where you turn the signal to show you the objects or the area onto the left or the right side, depends which side you're turning. Something that this doesn't have. So that's one difference between the two. So there are some wins and losses for both vehicle so one has those extra features one has a bigger screen um, as well and uh, but when it comes to technology overall they're not too far onto the front it's about time we take this on the roads and find out how it drives now initially i drove this from the dealership to this location for the video and i noticed something that i haven't noticed on the kia is that this is extremely quiet on the inside the only way we can find out is when we test it out with our machine. I have a, a DB meter where we're gonna take this on the road and find out how quiet it is. But that was my initial reaction was extremely quiet on the inside compared to the Kia. Now, let's go for a test drive and find out how it drives compared to this. That is the first thing I noticed with this car. It is extremely quiet on the inside. A little bit better than the Kia uh, Telluride. The Telluride, you can hear the noise. This is better isolated. I'm very interested to find out the uh, numbers. We're going to use this machine. This is called a DB meter. I've used it on the Telluride before and uh, we'll do a comparison. I roughly remember the number is somewhere between 61 or 62 DB. So this should give us a good idea. Let's start the counting. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with the Kia. Okay, it is on. Thankfully, it has battery now. 
and here we go. We're going to take the key on the same road and find out how loud it is or how quiet. Okay. Wow. Well, my suspicion was correct. This got at 60 kilometers an hour, 56.8. I don't know if you can see it. Um, you got 56.8. That is really, really low. Wow, that's that's pretty low for this. For I, I expected it would be low, but this is quite low. I'm very impressed. The lowest I got was 54 dB. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the Kia when I take it for a test drive, and we're gonna use the same road, same place, same distance, same speed. No cheating and find out how different it is. But I did notice the difference once I got in this car. It is extremely quiet on the inside. Very impressed with it. Okay, so we have the official number for the Kia Telluride. This is the same road doing 60 kilometers on both vehicles. Uh, same exact road, same distance between the two of them. This got 60.7. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, it's 60.7. So that's pretty high. So that was 56.8. This is 60.7. So close to 4 uh, dB more. Exactly, actually, 4 dB more, uh, 3.9. Like that's that's the difference between the two of them. And my suspicion is quite right. No cheating here. This is perfect. Uh, machine this the lowest I got in this one compared to that was at 58 that was the lowest so you can tell the difference between the highest and the lowest lowest is when it slows down a bit but the lowest I got on this for the Telluride was 50 um, 58.5 or 58.4 so that's it's uh, it wasn't that far on the low point but when it comes to the standard one the average on high was 60.7 for this 60 camera in this car it's amazing the steering wheel is a light that's very similar to the Kia Telluride I absolutely enjoy light steering wheels especially with vehicles like this no I don't need a gas station for now comfort level is there as well it it's very nice on the road doesn't hit hard on potholes um, the Kia is not far off as well. They're not very far on it, but I do feel that that isolation um, makes the driving experience far better in this thing in comparison to the Kia. Now, when it comes to visibility, very similar on both. I can see from the rear windshield, the sitting position in here is slightly higher than I would want to. I complain a lot about steering position. I complain about... Um, when it comes to the sitting position, it's slightly higher compared to the Kia. The Kia can sit pretty low, which I very much enjoy. Um, this, on the other hand, I pretty much put it all the way down. The other thing, the Kia is it has that leg extension. This doesn't offer, it doesn't seem like it has that option. Um, when it comes to the power delivery, they're both very similar. I don't expect anything crazy from both of them, but they're not um, performance vehicles, they're not like an Audi SQ5 or anything like that, they're just standard vehicles, they do the job great when you need it. So let's put it in sport mode and let's see if anything changes. So it went higher RPM, it was at 1000, jumped to 2000 RPM right away. Okay, it pulls. It pulls very well. I really like the new model compared to the old one. The difference is day and night. This is comfortable, the interior is beautiful. Um, all the buttons in here, massive screen. It looks like a giant iPad Pro, huge screen. Now, some people will like that. I don't personally, I'm not crazy about it as long as it does the job, but some people will enjoy that. Um, this car is extremely different and um, I'm impressed with Toyota. They have uh, brought in a real competitor against the Telluride because so far the Telluride has pretty much destroyed every competition that I have done um, 
The last one we did was also the Atlas, which was against the Palisade. The Palisade versus the Telluride is not extremely different. So they're very, they're within the same family. Um, this is very amazing. This is quite impressive. Now it uses, um, you still have the security features that you have on the Telluride. Uh, the safety features on the Telluride are offered in here as well. Lane assist, uh, you have a forward collision warning, you have a rear assist as well. It's pretty much um, similar on that. Adaptive cruise control stay within the lane. The system is quite impressive too on this. It's, it's a very good vehicle for the money. Now the big question that some of you may have is, is this better than the Telluride? Has Toyota finally done it? That is a very tough question and I'll say, uh, I will say why. Um, usually I have a conclusion for every comparison right away. This on the other hand is quite tough. Well, first of all, for the packages, you're looking at a thousand or two thousand dollars for top trims on both sides. The difference, Telluride will be a little bit cheaper. Where Toyota wins is in terms of um, how reliable this car would be in the long run. That's where the list starts. They're saying that the Koreans are taking over now compared to the Japanese, but the Japanese are bringing back some amazing cars. Like this one, for example, they can compete with the Telluride head to head, no problem price wise. They've priced it very well. They haven't done a massive change. They haven't priced it in where people will be like, well, I better go for this. It's the price is within the same range. It all depends on what they offer in terms of um, a warranty as well. In some states, in some countries, um, Kia offers up to seven years of warranty, which is impressive. Not the same thing in Canada. Now, in terms of um, the actual technology that these vehicles are equipped with, well, they're not extremely far from each other. As I mentioned previously, the difference is mostly on the key on the rear side, cooling seats and heated seats. So if that's something that interests you, it's good. Now this does offer heated seats, it just doesn't have the cooling seats um, like the Kia does. So that's something to keep in mind um, with when it comes to the comparison between the two of them. The driving experience in here is slightly better as far as how it handles on the road, how well it does on corners, how well it uh, protects you from those rough roads, from having that impact onto the car. This does a very good job avoiding that strong hit on the road that the Kia sometimes does. The suspension system is slightly stiffer in there. Now, Kia offers a self-leveling uh, suspension system on the limited package. So that's uh, one extra feature that you get in that vehicle. Brakes on both vehicles are very similar. They use a single pistons in the front, single piston in the back, nothing crazy, nothing fancy, um, nothing performance driven. They do, they do a good job to make sure you can stop this big vehicle because they're massive. They're seven seaters, um, three row seaters specifically. So with that, I just want to say this is a great car with I didn't expect a good comeback from Toyota, but they have done it. They waited a bit. They let Kia bring their toy first, and these guys waited a bit, and then they brought in their own challenge. They brought in their, their, uh, their own competition to the Telluride. Have they thrown that Kia onto the ground? Well, I wouldn't. Have they taken Kia Telluride out of its throne? Well, that will depend on what you like the most. If you're a brand loyalist, that you like to stay with one brand because you like them, well, you wouldn't switch to a Kia. If you like the Telluride from what I have reviewed, I think the Telluride is a great vehicle for price. This, on the other hand, has impressed me and surprised me at the same time. So it's all about taste at the end of the day. They're not very far from each other. Anyways, that was it for today. Thanks for watching. As always, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out my other comparisons. We might do another comparison with this. I just have to find a decent competitor to the Toyota Highlander. Um, and we'll do that comparison as well. But as special thanks goes to Toyota Georgetown for making this possible. Um, it's, uh, it's our fifth or sixth time we've done videos with them. If you want to know more about their dealership, the link will be in the description box. If you want to take this for a test drive, this is a demo car, so you can probably take this for a test drive and see how you like it. With that in mind, thanks for watching. Cheers.